It is a race to read your mind, literally. Companies are now planning to build tech that would be able to get into your brain. Are we ready for this kind of technology? Your brain may be the next territory the government wants to conquer. And tech companies like Facebook and Elon Musk's latest foray into this field called Neuralink may inadvertently advance operations in the DOD's DARPA and PSYOPs of the future. So how can you protect against this when there are no laws in the books for it? Here to discuss the ramifications of this sci-fi sounding advancement, our friend Lionel of Lionel Media is here. All right, Lionel, Zuck is funding this research on brain computer interfaces, or BCIs for short. It's supposed to be able to pick up your thoughts directly from your neurons and translate them straight into words, so literally something that can read your thoughts. What's the danger here as you see it? Well, let's go back to one thing you said in your prolegomenon, your proem, your introductory a reference to prefatory brilliance that you provided heretofore. Uh, you said high tech or business and the government, they're one and the same. Let's just make sure we understand that they're one and the same. Okay? So yes, fair aside enough. from that, when somebody is able to pick up your thoughts, and they're going to portray this, Manila, as being able to help. And this is true. People who have lost limbs, mm -hmm. uh, people who are, who are, who are who, instead of prosthetic arms, a, a better way to perhaps reacquaint them with, with, with normalcy. And, but if I can pick up your brain, then that means I can control your brain. I can hack your brain. I can also, everything that we've heard about in terms of algorithmic type of pre predictive uh, crime and minority report, it's mm -hmm. all there. Take whatever your normally wonderfully paranoid self is mm -hmm. and put it in overdrive. That's what we're looking at. And like you said very critically, this is not being at all looked at by anybody a priori uh, uh, in advance. We're looking at this a la Kurzweil and, and right. Gertzel and all of these folks speaking lovingly of singularity in this. This makes me shiver. This is the most important topic of anything that we're discussing. Elon Musk, he's working on something that can, can be physically implanted directly into one's brain. He wants people to be able to uh, someday control their TVs, their smartphones, etc., sure. with, with just their thoughts. In other words, like you just said, singularity. The argument here really is, though, is that it will help folks with paralysis live more independent lives. So is this the trade-off? Is this the good? To singularity. Manila, there is there is not one thing that we suffer from that is not capable of providing some good. Ask Mr. Nobel. He probably thought at first, this is the greatest stuff in the world, this TNT business. I can make cave. Well, you know the rest is history. <laughs> but let me also talk about this. What about hacking? How many times are we hearing these stories about so-and-so got one of those nifty uh, porch bell ringer devices and lo and behold, they're now hacking into, well, your brain can be hacked. And also, when we get into the notion of thought crimes and what you think and what you believe, and let's merge this into, believe it or not, and it's going to be here, Social credit. Can you imagine yeah. your social FICO score dropping oh, 10 points? Boy. Because you've recently <laughs> adopted another way of thinking. You've recently adopted something that we can interpret and pick up. But, but the thing is, Manila, you, you said it best. Where is the Manhattan Project? Where is the government? And I can't believe I'm asking for this. Where are ethicists asking people ahead of time before it becomes commonplace? Because remember, if well, we're talking about it. it, it's five years old. I, I, I know, that's Lionel's rules there, Lionel's law. Uh, Lionel, there are people discussing the future of this tech and the laws that need to be implemented uh, to prevent what one philosopher, or he dubs himself a, a neuro ethicist he called neuro capitalism or it, mm -hmm. I, the way i see it it would be more of you know the exploitation of your thoughts so are we truly facing a future of thought crimes like we saw in minority report this is a microchipping party and applause there. Yeah.
Hannah's getting an electronic chip implanted into her hand. She believes one day we'll all be chipped like her. So congratulations, Hannah. Thank you. You've been chipped? Yes, I have. How does it feel? It feels good. I'm, I'm excited to see what I'll be able to do now. Can I touch it? Yeah, you can, you can feel it there. I feel like this is the future. It's the next big thing that's going to happen. Happy cyborg birthday. Happy cyborg birthday yeah. to you. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> She is my daughter and I'm the, the father. So you're a microchip family? We will become one now today. Magnus and his daughter Felicia have come here together tonight because they believe this is the future. You're going to have an upgraded dad. Yeah. <laughs> As they say, it was good being a human, but being a cyborg is better. For around £130, anyone can get a tiny microchip like this inserted just beneath the skin in their hands. I can't help feeling a bit squeamish about it, but maybe I'm just behind the times. So here I have, I've stored my business card on my phone with my details, phone number, email address, other stuff, blood group even. So what's the benefit of that? When I get uh, customers or suppliers at work, they ask for my business card. And I say, scan me. Aren't there risks involved in that as well? Couldn't somebody pass you by and take scan all that information? Yes. yes, yes, it is in, in theory possible, but you have to be really, really close. But the main thing I think is that I choose myself what I want to store on this chip. Per has had his chip for three years. So I take my chip and open the, the door. It means he can buy a drink without cash or a card. But for him, it's about much more than practicality. A whole bunch of questions come up. Like, you know, is this ethical? Uh, do we want to have that? Or will we be sort of a nation of cyborgs in the, in the future? And what, what will happen? So a lot of sort of really interesting discussions come out from, you know, talking about the chip. It triggers an ethical debate. Yes. So I have the information in my chip now. That's basically just me. If I don't use it for anything, then no one can really get any data on me. But then if I start to use it at work, then work knows when I've interacted with something at work. If I then go to the canteen, the canteen people know exactly what I've interacted with there. So the wider spread it becomes and the more that we can interact with different things, then our data is being kind of shared and incorporated in lots of different places. The nightmare situation in that case would then be that someone else has access to our own, you know, my health data and that one day I get a letter through the door that's like an increase in my health insurance premium before I know that there's any problem with, with my own health. So I think we have to be cautious now in the very early stages to make sure that we're actually controlling how the information has been shared. New research published in a public library of science journal indicates that scientists have been able to help paralyzed people use digital devices with nothing but their thoughts. They just look at the screen and think about moving a cursor, and they're able to work the device using an electrode array system called BrainGate 2. Two men and one woman, paralyzed below the neck, had electrode grids implanted over part of the motor cortex, a part of the brain that helps control movement. When they looked at a computer tablet and thought about moving a cursor, the implants actually picked up those thoughts, then sent them to a virtual mouse paired with the tablets which actually executed what the people were thinking about. These were just store-bought tablets, too, not something fancy rigged up for the lab. So the people were actually able to use the tablets using nothing but their thoughts. They were able to browse the web, compose and send email, text, play music, and more. The woman looked up information on how to take care of orchids. She also ordered groceries online. One of the male participants was excited because he could actually text his friends and be funny with them, actually conveying his sense of humor easily. The other participant called the interface simply amazing. The research represents a breakthrough in that they used store-bought, unmodified devices. This is how far we've come, that we can actually implant devices in the brain so that we can control regular computer tablets with our thoughts. Obviously, the implications for people who are paralyzed are huge, but it's also a pretty huge step for humanity in general, just another step in the growing field of neural implants. So many economists believe the future will be cash free. You're already seeing it from everywhere you go, whether it's your baseball game or to your local deli. 
Now, Sweden is getting there even faster than anyone else. According to a New York Times report, a fifth of the country, a fifth, doesn't even use ATMs anymore. And 4,000 Swedes, now get this, have microchips implanted in their hands so they can pay for products with just a wave of their hand. Ah, makes the Apple Watch kind of look obsolete. So on top of that, many Swedish companies are asking their employees to get implants to pass through access points and to pay for conveniences. Now the red flags start going up. So for our red flags, we have to turn to legal media analyst Lionel. Lionel, thanks for joining us on this. I know you've got some red flags, and I feel like I'm reading out of the book of Revelation, possibly. So what concerns Absolutely. come to you arise from humans microchipping themselves? This is the mark of the beast. <laughs> this is, listen, no, no, let me, let me tell you something. I, I mean, I'm, I, I'm no biblical scholar here, but it's amazing the parallels made. Now listen, let's get down to brass tacks. Would you, st not you, I wish they'd stop with this. They go, we're going cashless. We've been cashless. Where's this cash? Ever buy a house with cash or a car? We've got this. I, I don't even have, I got a couple of bucks. We've been cashless. But that's not the issue. One of these days, these kids, these, I think you call them millennials or something, they're going to take these little tiny RFID, radio frequency identification chips, about the size of a grain of rice. And they're going to be cool, Scotty. Oh, they're going to be waiting in line overnight to get implanted. And they're going to say, look at this. I can go to the drugstore. I can go to a cab. Isn't this great? How cool am I? Look, I've got this little embedded chip. And they'll say, they have medical records. And you're going to do that to grandma and grandpa in case, God forbid, they have some kind of dementia they're walking off. I mean, after all, we have it in our dogs, right? It's like, oh, I'm star for human beings. But here's the catch. One of these days, God forbid, Scotty, you to fight. They, they, they find you guilty of something. And you go before a court, and they say, we're going to sentence you to prison? No. We're going to turn your chip off, and you don't exist. Everything. In fact, people are going to notice that when you walk up, they're going to say, who is this? You're not registering. You say, it's me. What do you mean, who is this? No, you're not showing up on this. You don't exist. If you think I'm kidding, this is Elba. This is, this is like some type of a prison. And people are going to be, one of these days, enslaved by this chip that will not, will, it will replace okay. you. Now, Scotty, what's that thing you have on your wrist? Oh, I, I said I've got the my thing that looks watch. like a watch? Mm -hmm. Oh, it tracks me. You know what that is? That's a surveillance unit. That's a surveillance unit. This is transhumanism. The RFID chip one day, and how many times have you used that? Have you used the iPhone wallet? Hey, I got this. Isn't this great? It's convenient, and you're though. Responsible. Yeah, convenience you responsible. Convenience is po That's a positive, though. We can't always say all technology positive. is a negative. Positive. It's positive. You know, Let me tell you something. When something is free, you're the product. This is what happened. You see, we're going around and we're, I mean, I, I, I don't want to uh, uh, scare you, but we've lost all sense of freedom. We're, we're, we're walking around here enslaved in this 24-7 worldview panopticon. You are walking around with a surveillance device uh, on your wrist. Well, you know and, what? And I've got this stupid thing, too. I'm walking around with well, it. The invisible door unlocker is hidden between the thumb and forefinger of his left hand a microchip that Frisk had implanted under his skin. Like me and my best friend stopped his girlfriend me. recently had herself chipped as well. It has many other uses besides unlocking the door. They can also store e-tickets for the train, for example. And that's just the beginning for this couple. But I think the interesting thing is when the chips start getting smarter and start having you know sensors and things like that. So. Um, instead of just opening a door, maybe I can have continuously record my, my body uh, temperature, my uh, blood sugar levels, you know, et cetera, et cetera, um, and uh, actually give me useful information about my body. The Stockholm subway system also has plans to modify their turnstiles so they can be opened with implanted chips. Over 3,500 Swedes now have microchips under their skin, over triple the number from a year ago. Surveys show that young people in particular are open to digital innovations. 
Very few worry their data could be misused. They have great confidence in their government and authorities. Implanting parties are the latest trend in Stockholm. Sweden's digital elite meet for a couple of glasses of wine and a chip under the skin. The operation costs about 150 euros, and it's no more painful than having your ears pierced, say those already chipped. They see only advantages to it. I'm nothing to hide. I'm still so so uh, social on social media and so on. I, yeah, I have my own company. I, I I tell every story. I'm a storyteller, so I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of trackable already. So it doesn't matter. <laughs> But I'm not afraid of that. I don't, I'm not afraid of that, no. Uh, and everything becomes seamless. Instead of having credit cards and mobiles, and uh, everything is here, uh, basically in my uh, body. Not everyone takes the idea so casually. A European Union study warns that implanted microchips could carry some risks. They could be used to form behavioral profiles of their wearers, who may well be sacrificing privacy for efficiency. Sweden's data protection activists are also calling for caution. From MRIs to EKGs, sonograms to scanners, medical technology allows doctors to monitor vital information about the inner workings of the human body. Imagine if some of these machines could be made so thin, light and portable that they could be attached right to the surface of your skin and go wherever you go. There's some very sophisticated device functionality sitting on my skin uh, now. Two NSF-funded innovators have done just that by engineering something called an electronic tattoo, a microelectronic health monitor that has the potential to revolutionize the field of healthcare technology. But you know, we we already have a, a situation in our brain where we've got the cortex and the limbic system, and the li limbic system is, is kind of the I mean, that's that's the primitive brain, it's kind of like the your, your instincts and um, whatnot, and then the cortex is the thinking upper part of the brain. Those two seem to work together quite well. Um, occasionally your cortex and limbic system may disagree, but they... It generally I think, works pretty well. Generally works pretty well, and it's like rare to find someone who... I, I've not found someone who wishes to either get rid of their cortex or get rid of their limbic system. <laughs> Very true. <laughs> yeah, it's that's unusual. So. So I think if, if we can effectively uh, um, merge with uh, AI by um, improving that uh, the, the, the neural link between your cortex and the, the, the your digital extension of yourself, which already, like I said, already exists, just has a bandwidth issue, um, and then then effectively um, you become an, an, an AI human symbiote um, and. And if that then is widespread with anyone who wants it can have it, uh, then we solve the control problem as well. Um, we don't have to worry about um, some sort of evil dictator AI um, because kind of we are the AI um, collectively. That seems like the best outcome I can think of.